Yeah, absolutely. So, so normally we see risk on being something that drives Bitcoin up, but over the last month with the banking crisis, we've actually seen risk off be a positive for Bitcoin. So this kind of a weird thing where Bitcoin people aren't sure, wait, which one is it? Is it a risk on asset or risk off asset? And right now the price action is telling us it doesn't know, right? I mean, we're even seeing the banks selling off a little bit today and that's not even driving Bitcoin to the upside. So the biggest thing to do here is look at the chart. And I think the chart really tells us a lot about where Bitcoin is relative to where it could go. So if I zoom out on my yeah. chart here, this is amazing. We're going back to the levels that were the lows during the bull market. And that's where Bitcoin is hovering just underneath. And so if you think about it on a psychological basis, this is like the, the Great Wall of China. I mean, this is the epic wall of Bitcoin's price action. And so that explains a lot why it's having so much trouble breaking above this $30,000 level. So for me, when I look at this, I stay bearish or sus a suspect in terms of whether or not the bull market is back on in Bitcoin. I'm still favoring the fact that we're still in a bear market in Bitcoin until we get over 30,000 and hold above it. Because right now, this is the line in the sand. And if Bitcoin can't get through this, it's still bear market central. Bitcoin saw another failure to exit a tight trading range into April 6th as $28,000 again hung in the balance. The pair had approached $29,000 the day prior, eating into ask liquidity in what analysis called a choreographed move by whales. That appeared to be true, as upward momentum soon faded and spot price remained in an increasingly narrow range. The cloud of liquidity around $30,000 thus remained untested, much to the frustration of those hoping for an easy continuation of the 2023 upside. Hello and welcome to Crypto Street. In today's video, Gareth Soloway updates about Bitcoin's current market standing and his outlook for Bitcoin in 2023. Yeah, I'd love to say I have, but I haven't yet. And the, the key is this level, right? So if we did get above 30,000 and we stay there for, let's say, a week or so and establish ourselves back above that level, I think at that point that I say, okay, listen, we're back above the psychological lows from the bull market of 2021. Now I think the low is in. But as of now, to me, this is a run of your mill bear market rally. If you go back to 2018, 2019, we had periods where we were up one to 200% off of the lows in Bitcoin. And yet we still came down and retested that 3,500 ish low. So you can't get too excited yet when the technical level that is the huge wall in Bitcoin hasn't been broken yet. So I'm sticking with 12 to 13,000 and maybe as low as 9,000 as of now. Okay. Yeah, so so it absolutely does. But the key is, is that that doesn't trump fear. It doesn't trump emotion. And so for me, as soon as the banking crisis started, I said to myself, all right, this is exactly why Bitcoin was created. This is the essence of why we need Bitcoin. But again, in the shorter term, when you see panic, like when you go back to the COVID 2020 March period where things were in, a, in really a panic central, you saw even gold selling off because during panic, people don't ask questions. They sell, they ask those questions later. And I think that's what we're coming into. We're coming into a period in the equity markets where I think you're going to get a realization. There's a recession. I know we'll talk the S&P in a little while, but you're going to get this sell off in the stock market. My guess is it bleeds into crypto and it creates more selling in crypto to the downside. Okay. Yeah. So if we get above 30,000, and I think this is key, is that a break above for a day or two, that doesn't matter to me. I've seen algorithms that'll do that purposely to stop people out or actually convince people that last little bit of FOMO to jump in on board. Think about the 65,000, which was the early 2021 high, and the 69,000 level where it convinced everyone we were headed to 100,000. But if we stay above there for a significant amount of time, a week or so, then likely that tells us that we are going to head even higher. Your next leg probably has the chance to take us up towards that 35, 40,000 level probably over the next month or so. Zooming out, meanwhile, trader and analyst wrecked capital eyed a trip to $27,000 as a potential signal that a long-term double top formation is underway. Recent BTC rejection from double top resistance means BTC could still drop from here to complete the second part of the formation, he tweeted on the day alongside an explanatory chart. Generally, double tops resemble an M shape, and so the second part of the pattern would form with a drop to tilde $27K blue. Others remained overall optimistic about Bitcoin's path for the coming year. After such a strong start, Trader and analyst Credible Crypto doubled down on his prediction that BTC USD would set a new all-time high in 2023. 
A dip to 2325K, which I have been talking about for weeks, doesn't change any of that. It is nothing to be concerned about, part of a recent commentary stated. Earlier, Cointelegraph reported on calculations calling for another bullish double top for Bitcoin in 2025, this potentially peaking above $200,000. Yeah, I mean, it's so tough to know what the heck's going on here. I mean, you know, Elon Musk, again, he, he loves catering to the crowd, to kind of the, the smaller investor, the retail yeah. crowd. And so on a technical basis, we can see that you actually had this beautiful kind of what we call a wedge pattern. It's a triangle pattern. And we broke above it. But on a technical basis, look at where we went. We went right back to the highs of February of 2023. And that's where price stalled out. So again, I think I think in terms of this becoming a mainstream asset, the only way that happens is if he really incorporates Doge into Twitter as a form of payment. That could then give it some relevancy. Otherwise, I look. I always sell these type of events because, again, it's it's. I still remember when he came out and he, you know, he was pumping and he went on Saturday Night Live. That was actually the high of the asset right. back then. And to me, it's it's more you sell these type of crazed pumps where everyone's FOMOing. So do not buy the hype here. Yeah, I wouldn't. It's just again, it, it's one of those things you could you could two x your money, but you could also go to zero. So so for me, when I'm investing hard earned money, I want probabilities heavily on my side. In this case, there's not probabilities heavily on my side. We can flip over to the S and P 500, yeah. and I think it's important to recognize that the S and P has really gone nowhere in a long period of time. That's actually not a good thing when you when you have a big drop from the all time highs and then you get into this consolidation pattern. What it tells you is there's an equal amount of buyers and sellers, and that's why price is chopping sideways. Right. A one seller equals one buyer. Problem is, we know the retail crowd continues to be by the dippers. So why haven't we gone higher? The answer is smart money, big money, institutional money is likely selling into it. So ultimately, my guess is we have another leg down in the in the second half of the year. We retest and actually take out the October lows and probably head down towards that pre-COVID high here on the chart. So I do have a downside price target at minimum by year end of 3300 and change. I do think worst case, we could even touch 3000 What kind of... Uh... Correction is that in percentage terms, Gareth, that you're looking at? Yeah, from 4,000 to let's say 3,000, we're talking uh, about a 25% drop from here. So again, I think the second half is going to be, I mean, this is going to be the kicker for the second half, is it's going to be a point where investors finally realize that we are definitely going into a recession and that the Fed can't bail us out by cutting rates aggressively or printing money because inflation is so high. All right, in the past, in the last 10, 15 years, any sort of blip in the screen, Case in point, 2018 in December, the markets dropped about 20% in six weeks. The Fed started cutting rates immediately. They could do that because inflation was sub 2%. Uh, they could do what they did in COVID because inflation was sub 2%. You can't do that with inflation up above 2% or 3% as I think it's going to stick around. And that's going to be a realization that is scary for the market. It's like a, a child where the bumper, bu the bumper sides get removed. You're now open to get hurt by the reality of the market. And that's going to be pretty scary for the markets. You're going to see a big sell-off when that realization happens. So what are your thoughts about Gareth Soloway's prediction? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.